Today's centrifugal pump minute will be covering pump inspection for a typical ANSI centrifugal pump. My name is James Farley and I'm the Griswold product manager. After a pump has been taken out of service and disassembled, there's some key features we need to inspect before returning the pump to service. Let's take a closer look. So let's start with inspection of our hydraulic components. When we look at the casing, we need to check for excessive wear, gouging, or pitting on many of the hydraulic surfaces. So that would include this front surface of the casing anywhere internal to the flow path. ANSI pumps are designed with one eighth of an inch wear. If you see a defect greater than one eighth of an inch, the casing needs to be replaced. Additionally, we need to take a close look at the gasket surface. This surface is where the case gasket will sit and it needs to be free of defects. Otherwise, there's a possibility of a leak. Now let's look at the impeller. The impeller has some critical surfaces as well. We wanna check the top surface of the impeller for any large gouges or pits or defects. We also need to check the pump out veins on the back side of the impeller. And we wanna generally just look in terms of the casting to see if there's any severe corrosion or evidence of pitting. If you see significant defects in the impeller, it should be replaced. Finally, let's take a look at the seal chamber or stuffing box. The stuffing box is the back fluid containment piece. And in this area, we need to check to make sure there's no wear or defects that would be greater than one eighth of an inch. We need to check the seal chamber for defects as it may cause issues with the seal performance. And finally, there's two gasketed surfaces that need to be checked. One is gonna be the, the seal gland gasket. This surface needs to be free of defects as well as the casing gasket, which would sit on this surface here. Next, let's look at the rotating assembly. During repair, we need to inspect the shaft and bearing housing before reinstalling the bearings. Check the two surfaces that your bearing fits are. One is your radial bearing fit, and the other is the thrust bearing fit. You're gonna need a pair of micrometers such as this to accurately measure the diameters. If these dimensions are out of specification, you need to replace the shaft. Additionally, you need to check for wear on the seal area of the shaft. And if you have a sleeve, you need to check that for wear that may have occurred during operation. If you have wear in these areas, you need to replace these components. When inspecting the bearing housing, we need to check the diameter at the thrust bearing. We also need to check for any defects in the snap ring groove, as well as the O-ring groove that's gonna seal the oil into the bearing housing. If you see defects in any of these areas, the bearing housing needs to be replaced. Now that we've completed a visual and dimensional inspection of the critical components, we're ready to assemble the pump. Along the way, we have to do some inspections to make sure that everything is within tolerance. We're gonna start with checking the end play of the shaft. To do so, we have to put the dial indicator on the end of the shaft. We have to use some sort of a mag base to secure it against the power frame. And we're going to see how much play there is as we move the shaft back and forth. This needs to be within the manufacturer's recommended tolerance. Next, we need to check the run out of the shaft. This will require the dial indicator to be installed so that we can measure shaft deflection near the seal. Again, this needs to remain within the manufacturer's recommended tolerance. Finally, we're gonna check run out of the impeller. To do this, we're gonna have to install the stuffing box and thread the impeller onto the shaft and check the run out of the impeller with the dial indicator. Once this is done, we're ready to finish the assembly and install the casing. So now you know some of the critical visual and dimensional inspections that must be completed before putting a pump back into service. We hope you found this helpful. Thank you for joining us.